Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a two and a half year old toddler named Kylie and I also have a 10 month old baby named Mia. As a parent, you may have noticed that your baby loves to throw food off of their high chair tray or off of the table onto the floor. You might also begin to notice other things like your baby or young toddler loves to climb all over everything or they seem to be getting into this habit lately of just throwing everything across the house no matter what it is. And I have some good news for you. These are actually very developmentally normal patterns of behavior called schemas. And while schemas did not necessarily originate in Montessori philosophy, they fit very well in helping to explain some of the behaviors that you are seeing in your child at home. And they are also clues as to how you might design some activities for your child to help make the most of their learning experiences. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to be giving you an overview of eight of the most common different schemas and how you might design some activities to help them work to your advantage in your Montessori home. So real quick, let's chat a little bit about the word schema. Schema is just a fancy way of saying a framework for something or how we understand the world. And young children go through all of these different types of schemas, sometimes multiple schemas at a time, sometimes just one. And the length of time during which your child might be really involved in any of these particular schemas is unique to each child. Schemas are how your child learns about the world, especially when they're very little, they are constantly using movement and experimentation to figure out how everything works. They're like little scientists. So in the context of early childhood development, a schema can be thought of as a really intense urge that your child has to do a particular type of behavior. And by repeating this behavior over and over and over again until they have mastered it or until they have really understood the concept, your child is finding out how the world works. Typically you will see schemas pop out while your child is playing, but they can happen at any time. And for sure, some of these schemas can be terribly inconvenient for us as adults at times, especially when it comes to urges like throwing things. But it is really important to understand what these schemas are so that you can recognize them and really begin to see the world from your child's perspective and realize that not all of this behavior that you're seeing that you might identify as misbehavior really is misbehavior. It's just natural development on your child's part. And if you can find a way to redirect some of those intense urges and all that energy that they have into something that is a positive outlet to explore that urge, then you are going to be making life a lot easier for yourself and a lot more exciting for your child. This would be in direct opposition to your child constantly hearing, no, don't do that, stop throwing things, get off of that chair, and all of the things that we commonly say as parents because we want to keep our child safe and we don't want them to injure themselves. But if you can imagine just for a second how your child might feel about being told no constantly to things that they really just don't even really understand why they have the urge to do it, but they know they have the urge to do it, it definitely can set up a very frustrating day-to-day -day experience for them. So let's go ahead and jump into what are the eight different schemas, how you can recognize them, and what types of activities you might provide for your child to help them explore those urges. Let's start with one of the most popular schemas that a lot of people think of right away, and that is the trajectory schema. A trajectory schema is exactly what it sounds like. Your child is very intensely involved in doing things that involve movement of their body in space. So they are running constantly around the house. They are climbing on top of everything. They are throwing things. They're kicking things. They're dropping things. Anything that involves creating lines in space or moving their body through the air, these are all related to the urge to experience different types of trajectories. The best way to support your child if they are currently in the midst of a very serious trajectory schema is to provide them with lots of opportunities to run and climb and kick and throw. So get outside, go to the park if you have one nearby, bring some balls with you and let them get all of that energy out where it is safe to do so. Trajectory schema also involves a fascination with things like running water. So if it happens to be summertime, you might explore maybe going to a local pool or a splash pad, somewhere that has lots of running water for your child to play with. 
And if you do have this space indoors, you might consider adding a small indoor slide or some type of a climbing structure like a pickler triangle. And this would be another way that your child can safely explore trajectory. And what's even more exciting is that I have partnered with Sprout, an amazing eco-friendly Montessori furniture brand for an international giveaway of their brand new pickler climbing triangle. The giveaway is happening over on my Instagram beginning today, January 23rd until Monday, January 27th, 2020. So be sure to head over to my Instagram at half a family vlog for all the details on how to enter. The next schema is connection. And this is another really popular one for children. So connection involves joining things together or building things out of other things. And it also involves the opposite of disconnecting or pulling these things apart or taking them down when they're done. A child who is involved in a connection schema is very intensely interested in putting together things like Legos or Duplo blocks or connecting wooden train tracks together or playing with magnet tiles. They might also be really fascinated with arts and crafts activities that involve taping things together or gluing things together or even using different pieces of string or fabric or ribbon to connect things together as well. So providing your children with lots of toys and activities that allow them to explore this connecting that they are so interested in is really going to benefit them. The next schema is orientation and this involves your child trying to see the world from a different perspective. So if you notice your child constantly standing upside down looking through their legs or if they're climbing on things at the park hanging upside down from the monkey bars or if they're simply laying flat on the ground looking upside down or hanging their head off of the edge of a piece of furniture these are all related to orientation. They really just want a chance to experience what the world looks like from different angles. So you might even see them taking a toy and turning it upside down and looking at it from a different angle that they've never seen before. So a way that you can support a child who is involved in exploring different types of orientation is kind of like the first one. Again, take them out to the park and let them climb on different things and hang upside down from the monkey bars. But you can also give them tools to help explore things maybe from an angle they didn't consider like a lot closer closer using a magnifying glass or a pair of binoculars. Another very popular schema, especially with younger toddlers, is transportation. This involves transporting objects from point A to point B. So often you will find children who are involved in the transportation schema carrying lots of little items from one place to another. And they might be carrying them with their hands, but they might also be looking for little containers or things that move to help them transport these items. Some easy ways to support a child who is involved in a transportation schema is to provide them with a things to transport like little types of shells or things from nature or small little figurines and B some things to transport them in so you might consider things like little baskets or small boxes little tiny bags buckets like the kind that you would take to the beach with you or play with in a splash table and perhaps even some of the larger items like baby doll strollers or wagon walkers the next schema is enveloping and this is when you see a child have an intense interest in covering either themselves up with like blankets and pieces of fabric or they're covering other things up and kind of hiding them from view. One of the earliest forms of enveloping that you can see in a baby is when they become interested in peekaboo. You might also observe your child building things, for example, out of magnet tiles, and then hiding some of their toys inside out of view. So the best way to support a child who is involved in enveloping is to provide them with lots of little blankets, play scarves and silks, and maybe even paper, old newspaper, things that they can use to either wrap up themselves or wrap up some of their dolls and teddy bears and other toys. The next schema, while related to the enveloping schema, is not exactly the same. This one is sometimes called a containment schema or an enclosure schema. And a child who is typically in the enclosure or containment schema is found climbing into things like laundry baskets or cardboard boxes or your kitchen cupboards. Or you might see them building little enclosures like with a farm set, for example, for all of their animals to be inside of. And this is different from enveloping because they're not hiding out of view. They're just getting inside of something and getting the sense of feeling contained or containing something. So some fun activities that you can provide for a child that is fascinated with containment, again, are some of those cardboard boxes and things that they themselves can climb into. But also if they don't already have sets of little figurines and animals that they can create little enclosures for, that's another option to explore. And you can also create something called an open and close basket, which is basically just a little basket filled with different types of containers that the child has to learn how to open and close. And if they are opaque, you can't see through them, you can put little objects inside, like little miniature
miniature figurines or little trinkets that they would find very interesting and you can hide them inside of the containers to give them motivation to open them up. So not only is this fun for exploring the containment schema, but it also helps them to work on some of that fine motor hand movement and their fingers as they learn to open up different types of containers. Another really fun schema is that of positioning. And this is when you might see your child becoming very interested and focused on making sure that things are lined up just so, or they're turning things upside down one by one, making sure that certain items are in a certain place. This really plays to their sense of order, especially for young children. Some activities that you can provide for a child who is interested in positioning might be providing them with a little basket of objects that can be sorted. They might also be very interested in creating patterns with different types of blocks or lacing beads, as well as pegboards or the little trains and cars that are magnetic that connect together. You might also consider involving your child in the process of tidying up every single day or teaching them how to set the table. And the last schema is called rotation. And if you've ever seen a child who is fascinated with things that go around and around, then they are most definitely in a rotation schema. There have been many parents out there who have laughed as they watched their young baby sit in front of a washing machine for what seemed like a really long time, just watching the washing machine go around and around and around. Your child might also be fascinated with wheels and constantly spinning them on different types of toys, or they themselves might just like to spin around and around and around or ask you to spin them around in circles. Some fun ways to support a child who is in a rotation schema is to not only do all of the activities that we just mentioned, but you might also consider providing them with other toys that rotate like little tops. There are also lots of bath toys that involve movement of water in circles like little pretend water wheels that you can add to their bath time fun and also in the kitchen. If your child is involved in a rotation schema, they are most certainly going to enjoy helping you with any type of mixing or stirring that you need help with. So those are all of the primary schemas that you may observe your child engaging in at some point or another. Again, sometimes it will be multiple schemas at once and sometimes it will just be one schema that they are truly invested in. It's important for us as parents to know what these schemas look like and be able to identify them because with that information in mind, you can then support your child in ways that allow them to explore those different urges in a positive way. So if you do happen to observe your child throwing something in the house or climbing up onto something that is unsafe, you can recognize that right away and say, wow, it looks like my child is really involved in a trajectory schema right now. And then consider how you might support him or her differently. So you can go over to your child and say, it looks like you really want to throw right now. Blocks are not safe to throw in the house. We could hurt someone or break something, but let's go take this ball outside and let's go throw it around together. Or if your child is climbing up onto a piece of furniture and it looks as if they may injure themselves, you can can gently but firmly remove them from that piece of furniture instead of yelling at them across the room and say, it looks like you really wanna climb right now. Let's go climb outside on our swing set or let's go over to the climbing frame and climb on that instead. Just try to remember that when you see your child doing some of these things, it's not inappropriate behavior. It's a natural urge. And your job as their parent is to coach them through this and help them to identify when they're having these urges and also helping them to see where they can direct those urges, where it will be safe for them to do so. So if there are any activities that you know of that are really helpful in supporting a child who is involved in a particular schema that I have not mentioned in this video, then please be sure to share it with us in the comments down below so that the rest of us can learn about it and perhaps put it to use in our own homes. If you liked today's video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And just in case you are new to my channel, I did want to let you know that this video is part of a larger series called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.